Hello and welcome to another episode of the Daily Wonder. Well, no, this isn't a part of that series, so never mind. Hi. Hello. <laughs> it's us. It's us again. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I own an interior design business, and this right here is my business partner, Anita. Hey, Everyone say hi. <laughs> <laughs> On Instagram, we just get a lot of questions about how we started an interior design business. Hi, Keith. Hey, Once sweet. again, Kiki, you gotta sit, 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 relax. Okay. I get a lot of questions about how I started an interior design business and also what it's like to work with one of my best friends. So we decided to do an Ask Me Anything on Instagram and answer some of those questions here in this YouTube video. So if you don't know, we have an interior design business. It's called Yellow Door Design. We specialize in short term rentals and medium term rentals, specifically unique stays. We love, love, love doing unique stays. And that's kind of our bread and butter and where our creativity flows. And so now we're just gonna answer some of these questions. One of the first questions is, how did you get into interior design and congrats on your blossoming business? Well, thank you for the congratulations. The way we got started is we packed up and moved to Virginia for I feel like it kind of started even before then because I feel like, remember when I moved apartments and then you uh, bought a house in New Orleans? I guess that's like... I feel like that was like the beginning of our blossoming like yeah. interior <laughs> design. Yeah. Where we like couldn't sleep and all we wanted to do was design. <laughs> yeah, I think that that definitely is where we planted the seed. Yeah. When we were both moving houses and got actually obsessed with designing these houses and I remember like drawing to scale in my notebook my house and like looking up things with you to put in it and that was definitely I feel like where we figured out we had a love for interior design for sure well and it's because that was like middle of COVID so no one had anything else to do right <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like that obsession was warranted it kept our minds busy <laughs> oh yeah but yeah that's I feel like that's when we really just kind of delved right into it and I know that was around the time where I would gotten my real estate license as well so real estate just really started to appeal to me too I actually tried to start an interior design business years ago while I was working at Chevron and had no idea what I was doing literally could not do it with work I had no no background on business no background on entrepreneurship and was trying to start this interior design business for people's personal homes and had no clue what I was doing no software and I was like okay we're just gonna do one person's house and then call it a day yeah yeah wow that was a good time baby lift <laughs> baby lift <laughs> baby lift so ambitious still is ambitious that actually plays in right into the next question, which is how did you actually start your business? Ah. <laughs> so fast forward to last January, Olivia and I moved to Virginia for three months um, because we wanted to acquire another property there. And we thought what better way than to just live there yep. um, and see all the properties and get to know the area. And while we were there, finding a property was taking a little bit longer than we anticipated. And we're impatient and we like to be busy. So we're like, well, while we're looking at properties and going through the due diligence period, what can we do in our business to keep it going? And we had so much fun mocking up spaces and finding things for our current properties. We're like, we could do this for other people. I think we also saw like a gap in the market specifically yeah. in Virginia because we were staying at a medium term rental there and we were like <laughs> like they literally, need a little bit of help <laughs> literally there were someone's ashes yeah <laughs> that was so concerning but yeah and it's like if you know real estate investors like a lot of real estate investors they have their real estate investment properties that's passive income but then a lot of the time most of them will have some sort of other business or multiple businesses within the industry that's actually providing them with active income so that was kind of our foray. I know a lot of people tried to convince me to start property management companies and we were both like, nope. no, <laughs> that is not what we want to do. But interior design was something we just did for fun anyways. And we were really craving another project because that's like the part that we love. And so this became Yellow Door Design. And we also had no idea what we were doing in the beginning though. Like yeah. we, even our first project that we did, we severely undercharged <laughs> and didn't have any systems in place. Yeah. 
had no clue what we were doing. <laughs> so if anyone out there is, you know, starting a business, just get started. You'll quickly figure out like if what you're doing is working or if it's not working or if you're underpriced or overpriced and what is worth your time. Okay, let's go on to the next question. What does your day-to-day -day work look like? What does our day-to-day -day look like? It depends on if we have a project or not going on. Yeah. Um, and I guess it's a little different for yeah. the two of us because Anita is still working her W-2 job, whereas I quit mine and have my social media and course business, etc. If we have an active project, what that looks like is, and every day is different, we might be having a discovery call with a client, like having a first call, figuring out what direction they want to go, their preferences, and starting to brainstorm ideas for the property. Or we might be working actively on a mood board or a mock-up on our computer, finding the different pieces and putting that together. Yeah, and I would say like even just as a business owner, a good portion of time is spent finding leads, finding clients. For us, it's generally through social media or attending conferences, attending mastermind groups. So I'd say like for me, a general day is post on social media in the morning. I have my whole morning routine where I go work out, I journal, et cetera, blah, 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 blah. And then throughout the day, it just depends on whatever task is present. It's either working on more social media content planning or or it's working, like I'd say, in the interior design business specifically, it's on actually doing the mock-ups. Like that definitely yeah. takes the most amount of time. And then also sourcing, you know, furniture items, materials, and making the actual full spreadsheet and stuff like that. That's where a lot of the time goes into. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then also like taking lead calls. So when somebody submits a form, meeting with them, coming up with a proposal and, doing all that good stuff. Okay, let's see what's next is, where do you see yourself in five years? So we actually have a business planning meeting on tomorrow or Sunday, so that's <laughs> part of the business planning meeting. But I don't know, I guess for me, where I actually do have a pretty clear idea of where I see ourselves in the next five years. If you haven't already figured out your vivid vision, read the book Vivid Vision by Cameron Hell. I don't remember what his name is, but it's by Cameron <laughs> something. And that's essentially what I've done both for my life and for my business. Um, but within the interior design space, I don't necessarily foresee us having like a ginormous interior design business, more so more larger scale real estate investment projects where we are doing the interior design for them. So like having a tiny home, villages all around Washington and Colorado, and then potentially moving abroad to Italy or South America, who knows? But yeah, I'd say that's that's where I see us within the business in the next five years. Yeah, I would say like within the next five years, we'll hopefully have like a tiny home village of our own or, or a hotel. hotel yeah. And then I would think we would take on just like special projects of things that really interest us. Yeah. Um, like unique spaces and stuff like that. I also foresee myself in five years spending a lot of time in Europe. So <laughs> I guess to play back on that plan though. So, you know, if you've watched some of my previous videos, you know that we have properties in Virginia. I'd say we're probably not gonna be focusing on Virginia as much just because for us and for our lifestyle, we have personally decided that we'd rather have properties in places that we already go and visit. So thinking more Washington, Colorado, potentially Texas, just because of proximity, you know, yeah. but trying not to go too far out to random places where we just don't really have a reason to go back there, right? So I would foresee like in the next five years, potentially we sell those properties in Virginia mm -hmm. when, if the 1031 exchange is still around, 1031 that into other real estate investment options opportunities. Maybe something in Mexico. Maybe some, just somewhere where we're actually gonna go. Okay, so how do you get clients? Mostly, um, like Olivia was saying, on social media. Yeah. Um, which is obviously something that Olivia is uh, pretty versed in, but is a little bit new to me. <laughs> but I'm learning the ropes now. <laughs> yeah, social media and then like events and mastermind groups as well are a big one. So I'm in a few real estate investing mastermind groups. I go to like at least four events a year. I think I, I don't even know how many I went to this year. <laughs> uh, but just general networking and meeting people and ref just referrals from people that we know. So even if we're, we're meeting people at these events, it's not necessarily them, but they have referred us to someone else and then they come and you know schedule a call with us. And then we, we in the future, will probably look into other ways to get clients, but for now, those are the best ways and either the free or already included ways that we can kind of get our business out there. Okay, advice for anyone thinking of starting a business with a friend. 
make sure that you can have open communication with that friend like at any time about any subject and you're gonna both be respectful but you're also not gonna be afraid to say like what you mean not that fight but <laughs> like yeah. I, I think that's what prevents it it's yeah. like we have open communication and and so nothing is ever a hard conversation for us. Yeah, I think also key is like making sure you have complementary mm. skills. So there's so many different um, personality tests out there and stuff like that. But if you guys always want to do the same things and really like doing the same things, you're not really gonna get anywhere with that, right? Like, so you don't necessarily want someone who only likes all the same things that you like to do because then all the things that neither of you like to do is just gonna completely fall through the wayside, right? <laughs> so like, I'm very much the in-face person at every conference and on the YouTube and on that, whereas like, Anita's more of like the behind the scenes, yeah. making sure systems and processes <laughs> are in place, which is something I'm not very good at, or it's not even that I'm not very good at, it's just easy for me to push to the side. So I think like making sure that you're finding someone where you have complementary skills. I feel like what makes us work so much is like, we're both down to do anything to make a project or something that we really want to have it work. Yeah. I have been approached by various other friends who've like wanted to start a business or wanted to do something, but deep down in my core, I knew it wasn't right and it wasn't gonna work out. So I think like test the waters first with something small, like a small, if you are if you wanna start a business with a friend, like maybe it's a small project because you may know them as a best friend and you guys are fabulous together, but you don't know them as an employee or a worker or whatever it is. And so you may not have the same work style. So that's just, you know, test a few projects out first, maybe travel together, maybe, you know, there's a few <laughs> things you can do to mitigate any issues down the line. Okay, well, those are all the <laughs> questions that we have. I uh, hope you enjoyed them. And if you have any questions about interior design, or if you're looking for any interior design services for your next project, make sure to go follow us at, at yellowdoor.design and fill out the link in the bio. There's a form. You can schedule an introductory call with us and that's completely free. So we'd love to design your next place. Bye. Bye.